Hey guys, Brent here. Today I'll be showing you how to build a full loan amortization schedule from scratch in Google Sheets. You can easily use Microsoft Excel too. And by following the same process, you'll get the same result. This exercise can be used for a wide variety of loans, including mortgages, car loans, student loans, almost every loan that you can imagine. I've compared this to a live mortgage loan and it gets to the exact repayments correct to the cent every time. Something to note is that this process will only work for fixed rate loans as adjustable rate calculations are slightly more complex as you have the interest rate changing on a certain period. Another thing to note is that this calculator assumes equal length months and some financial institutions may use an actual days calculation that compounds by actual month length. This exercise will also show you how to build in the option of making additional payments over the life of the loan. For example, if you received a bonus at work after a year of $5,000, and you wanted to put this against your mortgage. This would be a good decision to pay your loan off faster and reduce the amount of interest you'll pay over the life of the loan. If you find this video useful, please make sure to like the video and consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and would encourage me to make more content just like this in the future. Let's get into it. Okay guys, to make our loan amortization schedule, we just require a little bit of information. The first one is the loan principal. So this is the amount that we're wanting to borrow. So for this example, we'll use 350,000. We also need the interest rate, which we'll assume to be 5% per annum. We also need to know the loan period. Now, most loans amortize over 30 years. So we'll use 30 in this example. And we'll also use monthly repayments. Now in a single year of which we have 30, we'll have 12 payments within the, each of those 30 years. So we make monthly installments. Now, if this isn't the case, we make bi-weekly payments that would be 26. If we make weekly, that would be 52. And now from that information, we have to calculate the payment amount. Now what we do here is we take equal sign and we use a negative. This is to ensure that when we calculate the payment amount, it's a positive number. So just one of the weird quirks of spreadsheets. So the formula we use is PMT, standing for payment. And what we do here is we put in the interest rate. What we use is we use the annual one and we divide it by the number of payments within each of the loan periods which is 12 in this example. So we would take 5% divide by 12 and that would give us the rate. The next we use is the number of periods. Now what we do here is we take the total number. Now we have 30 years and for 30 years we make 12 payments in each. And we multiply the two and then we take the present value. Now the present value is the loan principal or the amount that we've borrowed. And here we put in the future value. Now. If you have a loan with a balloon, that is at the end of the loan, there's still an amount that's outstanding, which is often the case with student loans, car loans, things like that. You'd put that number in here as a negative number. However, for our purposes, we put a zero as we want our mortgage to completely expire at the end of 30 years. And then we close that, giving us a payment amount of $1,878.88. So let's get into the schedule. So the first period we start with is a zero to represent the first day, the day that we take out the money. And as at that day, we have a $350,000 balance. So that's the amount we take. Now, if there's any loan establishment fees or anything like that, say the bank charges you $500 to start the loan, this is where you'd include that. And perhaps you'd have a different entry in here for those different sort of fees. And then we move to the next line. And what we want to do here is use the sequence formula. And what that's going to do for us is automatically put the one, two, three, four, and build out all those different schedules. So what we need to do here is we need to multiply 30 by 12, giving us the total number of periods that we're going to be making payments for. And this just saves us the job essentially. So you can see there that it builds us all the way out to 360, which is 30 multiplied by 12. So it saves us having to drag that right down to the bottom. And what we do here in the first period is we go across to the payment, which we calculated earlier, and we look across at the interest. Now the interest is what has accumulated between the period zero and period one. And this was our balance. So what we have to do is we have to multiply the balance and we have to multiply this by the interest rate. So we're gonna use a bracket here. We're gonna take 5% and divide that by 12 periods to have our interest rate in that first period representing one month. So our interest amount is $1,458.33. And when we drag this down, we don't want these formulas to run. So we're gonna lock a few cells. So for this, you have to hold down the function key and press F4. And you see these dollar signs come in. Now you can either type those manually or you simply use the F4 key as I have done. 
and you do that for these two so they don't drag. We want this balance to drag as this will be a cumulative total as we move down the amortization schedule. So we can now leave that cell. Now the principal amount is essentially the payment amount less the interest. As the payment we're making is both interest and principal. And then we move across to the extra payment and for now we'll just leave this as a zero. Now when we calculate the balance, as I mentioned before, it's a cumulative total. So what we need to do is take the 350,000 and take away the principal amount that we've paid. But then also if we've made any extra payments, this will come straight off the loan balance. So this will be the formula that we use. We then move down into the second period and we do something a bit different here around payments. Now we do this because if we make additional payments or we play around with some of the variables, what we want to be able to do is take the minimum of the balance plus outstanding interest or the usual payment amount. And this just ensures that we aren't overpaying in our final installment. And we'll show this a little bit later on. So what we do here is we use the equal sign. We put in min representing the minimum value of two or more variables. And what we want to do is take the balance from the prior period and add in the interest amount or the regular payment amount. And we want to fix this cell as well. And we'll close that off. Now we can just drag down these additional columns. The balance should carry as well. And then we can take that right to the bottom. What we can do here is we can use this square in the side of the selection and essentially we can make those formulas run right to the bottom based on where these periods end. So here for example we have 360 rows and it loads right to the bottom. Now this is the fact checker right here where we, our balance ends at zero. So this shows that our loan amortization schedule has been a success. So now that our loan amortization schedule has taken form, we can now do some calculations. So if we look over here, we'll just take some sums. So we're looking at our total repayments over the lifetime of the loan. We're looking at our total interest payments over the life of the loan. And we'll do the same for the total principal repayments. Now this should be equal to the amount of money that we have borrowed. And as you can see, it's 350,000. So this will be something that we look at when we change some of our variables. So if we look over here, if we increase our loan principal, say for example, we want to borrow another $25,000. We've found a bigger house and we want to work out what our repayments would be. And we can work in with our budgets. What we'd look at is increasing this amount. So let's try 375,000. Now what you can see is that our payment amounts have increased around $200 uh, in this case per month. And our principal repayments have increased to 375,000 to match what the loan amount is or the amount that we've borrowed. Now what you'll also see is that our interest payments have increased. And this is because we have a larger amount that we've borrowed, so therefore the interest is calculated over a larger nominal sum. So if we bring that back down to 350,000, have a look at how that number changes. So 349,000. So thereabouts you're looking at $23,000 in additional interest to borrow an extra $25,000. So you're nearly paying dollar for dollar. If you want to borrow an extra dollar, it'll cost you a dollar in interest as well. So you'll repay the bank $2 to borrow that extra dollar. And this is why it's very important to look at these schedules to understand what the nature of these loans is, how it behaves, how it reacts to different changes in those variables. Now, the next thing we want to play around with is the interest rate. Now, some banks will offer, say, 5%. But there's always ability to negotiate. Perhaps you put more money down uh, when you take out the loan. Perhaps there's a more competitive bank, an online only bank, something of the sort. So if you can negotiate down a bank, what you can find is you can make significant savings. So let's pretend that we found a bank that's offering a 4% interest rate. Now here what we want to have a look at is the total interest repayments. We're paying 326,000. If we decrease our interest rate to 4%, you can see that we've significantly saved on our interest repayments to the tune of over $50,000. So in all cases, it makes sense to go and negotiate a better interest rate. The other factor we can play around with is the loan period. So for example, if we want to do a 25 year amortization, how would that play into the total interest repayments? So if we look at 25 years of monthly installments, if we're watching the interest payments, we find that our savings are well over $50,000 just from reducing the loan period by five years.
So that's a substantial change in the amount of total interest that we pay. So it always makes sense to pay off your loan a lot quicker. Now a less substantial change that we can do is change the payment frequency. The more times that you pay in a year, the better the compounding effect is because we're paying off our loan quicker and it means the interest is being calculated on a lower balance. If we change this for example to 52 weeks, you can see the payment amount has come down. However, the interest payments have come down less than $1,000. So it's not as material, but it still has an impact on the amount of total interest that we'll pay over the lifetime of that loan. So I'll change this back. But one of the big things that we want to be able to show in this amortization schedule is what happens if you make a lump sum payment over the life of that loan. So we've restored all our settings here. And after a year, you receive a bonus payment of $10,000 or a dividend or something of the sort. You've come into money, an inheritance, and you want to put $10,000 towards the loan at that point in time, thinking that'll be a good way to reduce the term of the loan. So let's have a look at what the impact of that would be. So if in the 12th month, we make a $10,000 payment, let's have a look at what happened to the loan. Now what we can see here is that we have 360 periods because it's a 30 year loan. However, down here we have all zeros and that's the effect of using the minimum formula right here. So what have we saved? We can see that our final installment is happening right here at month 339. So what we've essentially done is shortened the loan by 21 months. So we've essentially saved nearly two years on paying off this loan because we've made that lump sum installment at the 12th month. So this is a very powerful tool to be able to tell how much quicker you can pay off your loan just by making an extra payment along the life of the loan. So I encourage you to use this calculator at home, recreate it, play it with your variables that you have according to your loan. As mentioned earlier, that could be your car loan, mortgage loan, student loan, anything of that sort, and work out what strategies would be best for you to pay off your loan quicker. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please consider liking the video down below and subscribing to my channel. I will be creating more content in the future around personal finance, investing, or if you have any other ideas of what you'd like to see in the future, please let me know down in the comments. Cheers.